Let's get one thing straight. This is 48 hours. This is also 48 hours. Okay? Okay. So in my Discord, we of course share art and music with each other, showing each other what we're working on, but Lightspeed shared a song that, the moment I heard it, I decided that it would fit best in an infinite rudder type sci-fi game. But of course my plate is overflowing already, I just don't have the time to do that kind of stuff, and I expressed that opinion, to which they replied, oh, that's, that's unfortunate. So now I'm making an Infinite Runner sci-fi game. Before we get started though, just in case you don't know who I am, my name is Helper Wesley, I've made these games, and I make weekly devlogs. So I decided this game needed to be made in the shortest span of time possible. This needed to be made and out of my head, so I could get back to focusing on Subway Hell. So jumping right into it, I needed to make an endlessly looping floor, just like the ones I've been using for Subway Hell. The only difference being in this game, you won't be controlling your character like a platformer character, you'll just be going straight right all the time. With the controls being very basic like jumping and sliding, and speeding up. So in an effort to save time, I found this free to use art pack by Anzimus, 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 that person, and started chopping it apart to make the animations and set pieces for my game. Starting with the character. Like I said, the character's gonna be able to jump, run, and slide, and that's it. So I needed just those animations. The slide wasn't in the pack, so I had to make that myself, just by tweaking what was already there. I started by trying to make, like, speed controls that you would turn up and down like dials, but when I showed that to the Discord, they all thought that was kinda clunky. So I threw that out, and went for a simpler mechanic where as long as you're on the ground, if you press D to move over, your character will speed up. This simplifies the controls, and also disincentivizes people from just sliding the whole way through the level. Because if you're sliding, you're not getting the speed boost from pressing the D key. Next I made the distance to perp UI text, and that was just having two variables subtracted from each other. One being how fast you're going across the level, and one being this timed reoccurring event, simulating that the, the perp is moving as well. So they're subtracting from one another and giving you the difference, which is the distance you have left to go until you reach the perp. Oh right, I didn't mention, this game is actually a sci-fi detective game, where you're chasing perps across rooftops. The original idea for this game was to have it so that you'll be jumping down on the road, you'll be chasing the perps through different buildings and all these crazy things, and you'll see later, those things didn't happen. So I got to the point where I was giving up on the prototyping tools that I use, and wanted to put in some real artwork, and immediately felt regret about using an art pack. I've never used one before, so I didn't realize that they came in pieces, and you had to put them together yourself like Legos. Most of my artwork has been basic, let's say. So this actually took a lot of time to put things together and get some variation. I wanted to make three or four different sprites of each type, so that way when it wraps around the screen and comes back, it can be a different version. So it looks like the level is changing as opposed to just wrapping around. To avoid having to actually use the individual sprites as walking platforms, I tried making a straight line that you'd run across, but your character is actually moving, which meant that if I pinned the character to the floor they're walking on, both of them zip off into infinity. So we didn't do that. Back to using the individual sprites as the walking platforms. The way this works is, at one end of the screen there is a spawn, and the other end there's a stop. And when an object reaches the end of the screen, it'll hit the stop and reset back at the front to come back again. So as I was adding more obstacles I had to spread those apart further, and I was slowly adding art to the scene as I was working. For the early prototyping phase I was using the obstacles as just platforms so you, when you ran into them you would just stop running. But that was weird, and not the intended result of running into these things. Um, I wanted them to be obstacles that when you hit them, they'd knock you back and sort of waste your time so that the perp is able to get away faster. So I set up this simple collision effect, where when you hit these objects, you get sent back in the x-direction a certain distance, and then you flash while losing the ability to control, and then you're given it back again afterwards. I tried my best to do what I could with this art pack. I've never used these before so I didn't know what to expect, or even how to approach this art. I think I did alright, but honestly, the art pack itself is doing most of the heavy lifting. To give this game some depth, I tried to make one of those 
parallaxing backgrounds. The kind that give you that fake sense that as you're moving across the screen, there's a city or a landscape behind you that's moving as well. So I had to break up the background that was in the game originally, because I don't think it was intended to wrap the way that I needed to. It took a little bit of fooling around, but when I finally got it working, I'm pretty happy with how it looks. At this point I sent the game off for some testing, and people came back with the obstacles in the foreground not standing out enough, and so they ended up running into them a bunch because they didn't realize they were there. And my solution for this was to throw up a big shade on the background, uh, and just use that with some opacity tweaks to darken the background so the foreground was later. This seems to have helped. Those comments kind of died off after I did this. Then to give you that sense of speed, because I had actually slowed down the speed to help improve the game's readability. So to give you that sense of speed, I added some particle effects to the feet. I had never done this before, like a lot of things that I do, but Wishforge, another GDevelop user that makes tutorials, he released a video on how to give footsteps sound. So I basically did what he did in his tutorial, but instead of making footstep sounds, I made footstep particle effects. So every time the foot lands on a certain frame in the animation, the particle effect spawns at the character's feet. And then for the sliding effect, I just did it based on a timer. And for the jump, I made four different particle effects spawn at the same time under her feet. And like I said, I've never done this before, so I played with it a lot until I got what I felt was, was a pretty good effect. The game was coming along, but it needed more obstacles and things to do in it. So I created this middle obstacle that you can go under or over and then gave it the ability to be there or not be there based on random chance. And this was the point where I started giving the game some real randomization where I spread out the level some more and added some platforms and signs and things that all had a chance of appearing or not appearing or being droids or signs. Things that you could slide under or have to jump over based on how they spawn. And this I felt was enough to create enough replayability that you could keep playing the game for a little while without getting too bored. Because every time the screen wrapped you'd get struck with some new challenges. Or at least the same challenges kind of structured in a different way. So the week was kind of cutting short and this needed to be finished so that I wouldn't make this a two-weeker and I could get back to Subway Hell. This game was being made purely because that darn song that Late Speed made got stuck in my head and this game needed to be made so I could move on from it. <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but to those of us who have very poor impulse control, this makes total sense, trust me. So I needed to give this game a menu, a win, and a fail state. So the menu looks like this. I gave the title of the game, which is Delta Chase by the way, and the start button, the glitch effect from GDevelop. I was trying to find a way to represent the digital nature of the sci-fi world with my really limited art skills. And thankfully, GDevelop was there to back me up. It doesn't look amazing, but like I said, time crunch. I also wanted this game to be able to be played at different resolutions, so I added in some features that allowed you to do that, and when the screen stretches, the objects in the screen spread with the screen to fill up the space rather than just awkwardly breaking the screen, like you might have seen in some of the previous scenes. Then I needed a win and fail state. So I had the number there that you would use to tell you how far away you were from the perp. So I did this by making a bar on the screen that literally got bigger or smaller based on the distance between you and the perp. So the bigger the difference between you and the perp, the wider the bar got, which is just a simple stretch effect. And then I took two blacked out versions of the main character and put them on either end of the bar, one blue and one red to represent you and the person you're chasing. So you win if you and the perp touch, and then the perp wins if the perp reaches the red door to its right. Again, I was on a time crunch, so don't judge me too harshly for these. These end and win screens are just very basic. All I did was for the fail screen, I put the credits up with the perp with the red outline, which by the way was done with the glow effect in the layering options for GDevelop. And then if you won the game, your windscreen would actually be the opposite. It would be credits with the main character's icon, the blue outline. And at that point, the game was finished. And I had a little, tiny, tiny bit of time left before I had to make this week's video. So the Discord came back with a list of things that 
aren't game ending, but would be nice to have. And those included things like a falling animation and some tweaks to some of the artwork and the background scrolling in the Y axis when you jumped up and down, just to give it some more depth in the game, as well as some screen shake when you run into obstacles. I didn't really have time for any of that, but Ben Brooks, the person who made the artwork for the Game Dev Fireside logo, they suggested specifically the falling animation, which basically just added another frame to the falling animation so that when they jump and flip over, they have another frame now where they're more angled towards the ground, so it looks like they're about to land. And then through some more playtesting we found this, this one was actually a game-breaking bug. One of the platforms, for reasons I still don't understand, refused to let go of its platform behavior, which meant that even when it turned invisible, it for some reason would not submit. You'd still run into it and it was still a thing that was there in the game, but you just couldn't see it. I really wish I could have figured that out, but I couldn't. And the time crunch meant that I had to do something. So I decided to take out its randomization, and that one platform is a permanent fixture in the game now. Which means, through every wrap of the screen, that one is still there. Which I don't think you'll notice when you're playing the game, but as an outsider looking in, or I guess insider looking out, it really, really bugs me. This has been Delta Chase. This game was made in under 48 hours, using music from Lightspeed, and artwork from Anzimus? Anzimus. Anzimus. With help from those two people, <laughs> this game was made in under 48 hours, and should be playable on itch.io. In the future, I might go back and fix the things that were broken with the game, and maybe put it on Google Play with my other games, and throw in some ads so I can like make pennies off of it. But that's what I got done this week. If you enjoyed that devlog, maybe click on that subscribe button. And if you want to talk to me personally, the link to our Discord is down below. It's called the Game Dev Fireside. It's a pretty chill place to hang out and talk game dev, and life, and your favorite movies, and stuff. <laughs> and if you decide to click on that link, then I will see you there. 